Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So this is the second video in this um, series I'm making on how to make um, neural networks from scratch in Julia. So if you guys remember the first video, um, I showed you guys like kind of what the what the final product will look like, um, which is this like simple grad library that I made. And you guys can see like the um, like the simple grad documentation website. Um, it's meant to be like an educational package. So it's meant to be like fully usable um, for like some basic machine learning applications, but also educational. Um, and the, the documentation is like kind of written like a textbook so that you can understand everything that's happening. But yeah, I'm making, I'm making this um, video series that will basically be like building out this package from scratch so that we can um, build out every part of it and then understand how it works and really understand um, how deep learning with neural networks like actually works um, from first principles basically. This lesson I'm going to be showing you guys like how to begin to um, build out this, uh, this machine learning library um, from scratch basically. And we're going to start by making this um, value data type. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's get started. So the goal for this video is basically to um, is to define our um, value uh, data type. And yeah, remember at this point we're doing everything from scratch, no imports, no packages, um, everything from scratch. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started with this. So to define a, a, a new type in Julia, this is kind of the notation. Um, we're going to say mutable struct. Mutable just means that it can be changed after it's um, initialized. Um, struct is is like a, yeah, just a structure with it's going to have some like fields, and then our name of it's going to be value. Uh, I'm going to give it a type parameter, which I'll tell you guys more about this in a bit. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a type parameter called op type. Basically, this is going to allow us to. Um, to tell what operation um, a value was created from, if it was created from an operation, or if it was just defined by the user. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get to that in a little bit, and then um, we're gonna say that this value type is a subtype of number. Uh, again, more on this later. So yeah, this is kind of our um, definition, more on this subtyping later, and more on this optype later. But yeah, for now, it's just gonna, gonna say mutable struct value, um, and then yeah. So we mentioned before that we're gonna have, um, we're gonna be storing two numbers in value. So we talked about this before in the last lesson, we're gonna be storing um, like the value dot data, and that's gonna be the actual number that we're storing here. And that's going to be um, a number of type float 64. So it's going to be, the, yeah, the actual number. And then um, we're also going to be storing the gradient of uh, gradient of the value. So we're going to call that um, grad. It's also a number with type um, float 64. So we saw those um, in the last lesson because we can, if we have some value x, we can access these numbers with x.data and x.grad, which is what we were doing. So that's just how we're defining those um, fields in this in this type. Um, there's one more field that we have, and this is something that we didn't we haven't seen yet because this is something that rather than being something that um, we were accessing last video, this is something that was working behind the scenes that we were never actually directly um, accessing was just working behind the scenes. And this is the um, operation called op. And this is gonna be the um, op type. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see more on this um, soon. But yeah, this op, this op field is what we're gonna use to um, track the operation that was used to create a value. So if you guys remember, like if we have, if we have values X and Y, we can make a new value called Z out of these values X and Y, um, and we can just add them together and get Z um, created as a new value automatically out of this addition of other values. So basically this op is gonna be what we're gonna use to tell us that, okay, X and Y were um, 
they were uh, defined by um, by the user, and then Z was created with an addition operation of X and Y. So yeah, that's pro probably a little bit complicated, but you guys are hopefully going to see once we actually like implement this from scratch how it works and how we're going to keep track of the operations like that. But yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that in a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that soon. But yeah, so yeah, for now let's just um, let's just run that code. And then yeah, so um, I said before that there there were two um, there were two data types as part of this package. There's actually three. So there's um, values and tensors. Those are the ones that the user actually like uses and interacts with. But there is a third and maybe the most important um, custom data type we're using is actually the operation um, the operation uh, data type. So this is going to be called um, destruct operation, and we're also going to have some type parameters. Again, we'll talk more about these before. So I want to say uh, func type, and then um, arg types. More on these later, but but this is basically going to tell us, um, yeah, like what type of operation uh, we're talking about here. Could be addition, could be multiplication, um, subtraction, and then arg types is going to tell us the type of the uh, operands. Um, so yeah, if we, if we have like z equals x plus y, uh, the func type will tell us um, that it's an addition operation, and then the arg types will tell us the type of x and y, and specifically that they're, um, that they're value types. And yeah, we're also just going to store these as, um, as the actual fields here. It's going to say op is... Uh, op is, is um, a variable with, with this uh, func type. Um, remember, this is just going to be storing the operation. Um, I'll just keep doing that. And then args, uh, it's going to be a field with type arg types. Um, again, yeah, this is probably confusing. Um, this will hopefully make more sense in a little bit once we start actually um, testing it out with an example. Then you guys are going to be able to actually like print out what these are for an example and actually take a look at them. Um, okay, so we're just going to run this. And then, um, okay, next we need our constructor. So basically, um, now that we have these, uh, these uh, composite types defined, we need a way to actually create one of these objects. So we're going to make a constructor uh, a constructor for that. So to do that, we're going to say um, value input x, which is some number, um, is going to be, and this is the actual constructor part, it's going to be value and then we need to fill up these um, three fields here with our uh, with our creation of this value. We need we need to know the the, the value dot data, the value dot grad, and the value dot op. Um, so the value dot data is going to be um, just w whatever whatever number um, they're passing in. We're going to confirm that it's a float sixty four. So if they pass in an integer, it'll um, automatically cast it to float 64. But yeah, that's going to be our um, our data field. Uh, the grad field, we're gonna we're gonna just put a placeholder in here for now. 0, um, 0, 0.0, just a placeholder. Remember, the grad field is what's going to eventually be filled up with the actual um, derivative with respect to some eventual loss function or something. But yeah, for now, we need a placeholder, so we're trying to make grad um, 0.0. .0. And then for op, when we're when we're making um, when the user is defining a value themselves, the op is going to be nothing because that's going to tell us that okay this this value wasn't created from any operation of other values. It was just defined by the user. So if we say um, if we have like again just our example z equals um, x plus y, we want to be able to know that z was created from an addition operation, but 
we're going to be able to know that X was created from from no operation. It was just defined by the user. And then same with Y. Y was just defined by the user. So we want the op to just be nothing, actually. And again, if any of this is confusing, I think it'll make more sense when we um, eventually look at these things with an actual example. But yeah, um, this is just our constructor. Um... Okay, run that. Uh, okay, run again so it doesn't burn anything. Uh, okay, making progress here. Um, yeah, we're getting there. Next thing is a little thing we're going to add for convenience um, for ourselves. So we're going to make a way to um, print out values and have them look nice. Um, so if you guys remember before, when, when we print out a value, we get this nice notation like value... Uh, parentheses and then whatever whatever the number it's storing is whatever the value dot data field is we just we want to print that out so what we're going to do here is we're going to say um import base dot show um it's okay if this code doesn't make sense you guys this is going to be just a little bit of um overriding like a like a base um julia function and we're going to say function show um io yeah, this part, um, it's just, if it doesn't make sense, you guys, don't worry. This is just a little piece of code so that we can print out what the values are. Um, and then this is what we want to print. We're going to say value parentheses, um, comma, value dot data. Um, close parentheses. Okay. Yeah. So this is just going to let us um, print out the values. Believe that works. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we should be able to do something like X equals value four. Um, and then print it out. Yeah. Looks like it worked. And then we could we could pass in um, for us an integer like that. We could make it um, a float if we want to. Um, yeah. So, yep. Can't do can't do too much with it yet. Um, but we are we do have something now. We're, we're we're sort of setting ourselves up to start to um, have this value type, and then eventually start to add more functionality. So if you guys want, you can also like print out um, the data. Um, can print out radiant, and then can print out the op, and then yeah, the op is nothing because we define this. Um, we just define this ourselves, so it wasn't created from any operation. Uh, okay, so this is just like the very like bare bones kind of here. Maybe I'll uh, leave these in so that when I upload this code, you guys will have it. Uh, okay. Um, okay, one more thing to add for today's lesson, and then I think we'll call it, uh, we'll call it good for today's lesson until, until the next lesson. Um, yeah, last thing, last thing for, last thing for this lesson, um, we want to be able to check if two values are equal, and importantly, we, we want this to only return true if they're actually the same value, meaning they're actually the same object in memory, not just if they have the same uh, the same number that they're um, representing. We want we want them to only be considered the same if they're actually the same object. So basically, what we want to be able to do is say like x equals value um, value for y equals value for this should be false actually because even though they're both four um they're different objects in memory so they're, they're they could be for example different uh parameters in our model that just happen to be storing the same number but we want to treat them as if they're different variables 
But then at the same time, we want to be able to say like z equals x and then and then have that be um have that be true because defining defining z like that, z and x are actually then pointing to the same value in memory. So that should return true that they actually are equal. But yeah, we need to we want we want to specify to Julia that this is how we want these values to be treated, basically. So we're gonna we're gonna say this. Okay, so we're gonna say import base dot equal equal. And we're gonna be doing this a lot. So you guys saw we just did this for this show. We just did this, we're doing it now for equal equal, um, the uh, equality check. Um, we're gonna be doing this import base a lot because basically what we wanna do is we wanna have our values be like usable with with regular notation. So we, we wanna be able to say like, um, like x plus y where x and y are both values and then like, yeah, x times y, stuff like that. But for each of these operators, we need to we need to tell them like what to do for value objects. So this is called like method overriding. Basically we need to we need to like write a function that tells these like base Julia operators what to do when they're used on our um, custom value uh, value objects. Um, it doesn't it doesn't just know how to do that. It doesn't just know what to do when you use the plus sign with two of these um, values. We're gonna have to be like, writing the code for this from scratch. Um, okay, so if this is a quality check, what we're gonna say is function equal equals A, our first input, which is a value, B, second input, also a value, and return A, equals 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 b three equal signs here because in julia um the three equal signs checks if um if two if two variables are actually pointing to the same object in memory not just if they're if they're two variables like storing the same number or something they this only returns true with the three equal signs if they're actually the same object in memory, which is what we want these um, values to be treated when we compare with this um, double equals. So yeah, we'll define that. And then we'll try running this code and this code hopefully now should be good, I think, right? Um, yeah, so it looks like it worked. So now, now we know we have X and Y, they're both holding four, but um, they're two different objects in memory, could be two different variables in our model. So when we say x equals equals y, it returns false. But if we define this to say um, z equals x, so now z and x are pointing to the same value in memory, um, this returns true. Um, okay, so that's kind of a start. Um, still kind of a lot more to do, but we're, we're getting there. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting there. Um, so I think in the next video, we're going to start talking about how to uh, define value addition. Um, we're going to talk about how to uh, write the code for that from scratch so that we can add uh, values together um, and also like track the operations with them. But yeah, I think this is good for today's lesson. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, all, the, all these notebooks with the code will be up on my GitHub if you guys want to check them out. Um, again, if you want to check out um, the actual... The actual simple grad package, the links are here, um, GitHub repo, um, and the documentation. Yes, yeah, so if you guys want to check this out. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, see you guys next time.